Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello everybody, I hope that you're doing well. Today we're going to work on Surah Al-Nazi'at, which is Surah 79 of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. It was translated to the extractors or the angels who pulled out the souls. They removed the soul from a dead body. Surah Al-Nazi'at is made of 46 verses, 46 ayat. It is part of the last juz of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, juz al -Amma. In Arabic, the word nazihat is often translated as angels, the angels in charge of extracting the souls from the dead. Surat al-Nazihat was revealed in the city of Mecca. The Meccans of the time denied the resurrection. So the subject of Surat al-Nazihat confirms the day of resurrection by using in the first ayah the angels. Because the Meccans did not deny the existence of angels, therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the angels that the reality of the day of resurrection cannot be denied. In Surah Al-Nazihat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath and gives a warning. The story of Sidna Musa alayhi salam and Pharaoh is used as an example affirming the resurrection and the afterlife. In Surah Al-Nazi'at, some aspects of the Day of Resurrection are described and a question about the date of the Day of Resurrection is answered. So the central theme of Surah Al-Nazi'at is the affirmation of the Day of Resurrection and the hereafter. In Surah Al-Nazi'at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with oaths of angels who take the soul from the dead and it is these angels who carry out the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who conduct the affairs of the universe according to the divine will. The angels who are employed to take back the soul during death can also be employed to restore the soul for tomorrow on the judgment day. And there is also an oath on the angels who carry out the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and conduct the affairs of the universe today. They can also reverse the order of the universe tomorrow by instructions and command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and can also establish a new order, a new organization in the hereafter. By evoking the story of Sidna Musa alayhi salam and Pharaoh as an example, Surah al naziad reminds the human being to learn to distinguish between good and evil and the need to have faith in their creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. Surat Nazihat teaches also certain moral values that every Muslim should take into consideration while recalling the importance of preparing for the last judgment day. Surat Nazihat also speaks of the terrible faith of the infidels, the disbelievers, on the day of resurrection. Surat Nazihat is characterized by a series of verses which briefly describe the end reserved for anyone who opposes the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gives into his or her own desires and temptations. No one will escape the faith of the day of judgment. Mankind will remember all that they have done and committed as injustices and sins during their life. Those who have devoted themselves to entertainment and gratification of their desires, the way to hell will be shown to them. The last ayat of Surah Al-Nazi'at come as an answer to the question of the polytheist who wonder about the time, the hour of the last judgment day. It is said in Surah Al-Nazi'at that the mission of the messenger is limited to warning people and directing them to the right path of faith and belief. It can only unveil information about the afterlife. Indeed, they will ask when the great cataclysm comes. So it is a real fact that day will come without a shadow of a doubt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only Allah knows when that moment will come. When the day comes, the whole earth and this short-lived momentary world will disappear forever. Now, I will translate Surah Al-Nazi'at, ayah by ayah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the specially merciful. When Nazi'at gharqa, 
by those who pull out with great violence by diving, when na shita tinashta, by those who gently take out without harming, wasa bihati sabha, by those that keep on swimming, keep on flowing, fasa bihati sabqa, and by those that get ahead by racing, fal mudabbirati amra, and also by those that fulfill the order and manage and govern the affairs with command. From ayah 1 to ayah 5, it is about an oath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes oaths on these angels who tear out the souls destined for hell, and those angels who gently remove the soul destined for paradise, and those angels who glide as if swimming, and those who charge quickly, eagerly competing to carry out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order and commands, and by the angels who organize every matter according to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَوْمَ تَرْجُفُ الرَّاجِفَةِ On that day on which the caking, one shall cake, which is like a trembling. تَتْبَعُهَا الرَّادِفَةِ The successor, the second quake, shall follow its first quake. قُلُوبٌ يَوْمَ إِدٍ وَاجِفَةِ Hearts on that day of permission shall palpitate with fear and terror. أَبْسَارُهَا خَاشِعَةِ They looks their gaze will be abased in fear. يَقُولُونَ إِنَّا لَمَرْدُدُونَ فِي الْحَافِرَةِ They'll say, shall we indeed be restored from our graves to our first state? أَإِذَا كُنَّا عِدَامَ النَّاخِرَةِ Where we are rotten, scattered bones. قَالُوا تِلْكَ إِذًا كَرَّةً خَاسِرَةِ They said that return or resurrection then is a return with loss. فَإِنَّمَا هِيَا زَجْرَةٌ وَاحِدَةِ Yet the return the resurrection is only a single cry. فَإِذَا هُمْ بِالسَّاهِرَةِ By then, they are on the surface of the earth. From Ayah 6 to Ayah 14, in Surah Al-Nazihat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a severe warning to the Meccans who make fun of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he speaks of the day of resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them that it will be one sound and they will find themselves alive once more, all standing together on an open plain. This hour cannot be removed by denial or fight or mockery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes on the day of resurrection that there will be at the beginning just a first shaking which will be followed by a second major shaking. The first tremor, the first shake or quake will destroy the earth and everything in it. It is a single tremor that will upset the system of this world, while the second quake, the second tremor, will show humanity rising up from its grave. It's a second blast that will be enough to make the dead appear as living beings in this new world. The hearts of those who denied the resurrection will tremble and quiver with terror. At that time, the same people who used to deny the day of resurrection will look with terrified eyes at everything they thought impossible. هل أتاك حديث موسى؟ Has there come to you the story of Moses? إذا نداه ربه بالوادي المقدس طوى His Lord has called out to him in the sacred valley of Tua. اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طوى Go to Pharaoh, surely he has transgressed. فقل هل لك إلى أن تزكى And tell him, would you like to be cleansed, like to cleanse your soul, your heart? وَأَهْدِيَكَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَتَحْشَىٰ And say, let me deliver you to your Lord, so that you be the owner of reverence. فَرَآهُ الْآيَةَ الْكُبْرَىٰ Then showed him a mighty miracle. فَكَدَّبَىٰ فَعَسَىٰ But Pharaoh belied and rebelled. ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَىٰ يَسَىٰ Then he turned his back in haste. فَحَشَرَ فَنَدَىٰ He gathered his people and called out to them. فَقَالَىٰ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَىٰ then Pharaoh said, I am your mighty God. فَأَخَدَهُ اللَّهُ نَاكَلَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَىٰ So Allah seized and ruined him with the torment of life and the hereafter. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَعِبْرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَىٰ Most surely there is in this a lesson for whoever is in awe. 
from ayah 15 to ayah 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the Prophet Sidna Musa alayhi salam to the sacred valley known as Tawa and told him to go to Pharaoh because he has transgressed beyond all boundaries. Ask him if he wants to repent and be purified. Offer to guide him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by showing him a great miracle. Then Sidna Musa alayhi salam turned his stick into a serpent or snake. But Pharaoh denied the miracle and turned his back on the offer to be guided to the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pharaoh quickly gathered his people. He proclaimed to them that he was the most exalted Lord, that he was the supreme and the highest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seized him to punish him in this life and in the hereafter for setting himself up as a deity for his oppression of the people and for his refusal of the offer of Sidna Musa alayhi salam. The faith of Pharaoh for his disbelief in the messenger Sidna Musa alayhi salam, for the rejection of the advice he brought him and his attempt to frustrate his mission by trickery and deceit. It is like to say to the Meccans, if you don't learn from it and change your behaviors and attitudes, then as a result, you will have to suffer the same fate. In regard to creation, are you stronger of the sky he constructed upon you? Is it harder to create you or the sky he created above you? He raised its sky, its ceiling, increasing the height of it, then designed it and organized it. And he made dark its night and brought out its light. And the earth, he spread it and furnished it after that. He brought out from it its water and its vegetation. And the mountains, he placed them firm into the earth. To be a benefit for you and your animals. From Ayah 27 to Ayah 33, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about His creation, He as a creator. There are arguments that have been given regarding the hereafter and life after death. In this regard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a question to humanity, especially to the deniers, the disbelievers. What is more difficult to create, you or the heavens? The infinite universe that extends around you to the infinite distances with its myriads of stars and planets. The universe was built in perfect proportions. The darkness of night spreads over the earth. The sun shines brightly in the sky. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth and its resources, especially springs of water and vegetation of all kinds, and mountains firmly set into the ground. All of this is arranged to meet the needs of man. All these resources are provided for the benefit of mankind and all living creatures. All these resources testify that they are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with great wisdom and each of these resources was created for a specific purpose. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الدَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى But when that great and terrible calamity comes, يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى That day the man thinks what he worked for, what he had done. وَبُرِزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَى and the blazing fire hell had been shown clearly to the one who shall see it. But whoever has transgressed the bounds, exceeded the limits, and preferred the life of this world. Then surely the flaming fire that is the abode. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى and but whomever feared the post of his Lord and restrained his soul from its low desire, the person who did not follow his low desires. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Then surely heaven, that is the abode. From Ayah 34 to Ayah 41, 
Surat Nazia talks about the great disaster, the disaster that will strike the day of resurrection. It will come and everyone will remember what they have done. Hell will be in plain sight. It will become the home of those who have transgressed. Paradise, on the other hand, will become the home and refuge of all those who were righteous, those who held back from the base desires and injustices, and those who feared the last judgment day and those who have shown good faith. In this part of Surat Nazihat, it is said, once the hereafter is established, The eternal future of man will be determined by the criteria of which of them has rebelled against his Lord, transgressing the bounds of worship and making material benefits and pleasures his unique objective of life, and of who among them has feared to stand before his Lord on the judgment day and reframed from fulfilling the illicit desires يسألونك عن الساعة أين مرساها They ask you about the hour. When will it come? فيما أنت من ذكراها What do you have other than from its mentioning? Who have no other knowledge than declaring it? إلى ربك منتهاها To you, Lord, is the end of it. إنما أنت منذر من يخشاها You are only a warner to those who have reverence to him, the one who fear him. كأنهم يوم يرونها لم يلبتوا إلا عشية أو ضحاها. On that day which they shall see it, they become as if they had remained only the later part of the day or the early part of it, like mid morning. From Ayah 42 to Ayah 45 in Surah An-Nazihat, the disbelievers in Mecca asked the Prophet Sina Muhammad about the hour, the day of the resurrection. When will it come? Although they didn't believe in the resurrection or the hereafter, they asked this question again and again. When will it come? They said repeatedly. But the Prophet Sina Muhammad is unable to answer them. Only God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knows the answer. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the ultimate knowledge. The Prophet Sina Muhammad s.a.w.'s message and warning will only benefit those who fear the coming of the day. On the last verse, Surat Nazi'at says that this life is only worth a moment. When the day of resurrection begins, humanity will feel as if they were in this life for only part of the day. Those who have ruined their lives with injustices and greed and selfishness will wonder after their death how they could have done this in such a short time. Mankind has the power of free will. He has been given and trust authority and responsibility and was entrusted with the notion of knowledge by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, he should be called upon to render accounts in the end and be rewarded or punished accordingly. Wallahu alam. I hope that this small translation and explanation of Surat al-Nazihat was helpful. I wish you the best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye-bye.